Hello, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Trying to get this all set up. But good morning, welcome. Welcome to Friday's final five days of prayer for entrepreneurs. It is officially Friday. We are in our final day. And um, it has been a good week. It has been a good week. So good morning, everybody. Nicole Cooper here. And today we're going to do our final and fifth day. Hello, Miss Tasha. We're going to do our final and fifth day. And um, just to do a recap, for those of you, if you are new here, we've been doing the five days um, of prayer for entrepreneurs. And we have been, um, we're on day five. So for day four, for day four, we actually, um, yesterday, we'll start off with day one. I'm just trying to get Instagram set up. Hold on one second. Uh, let's get going. We go live. All right. And then we are official. Okay. Let's go. Okay, cool. All right, y'all. So we are live. We're live on both Instagram and on Facebook. And I am super excited to see all of you guys here on today for the five days of prayer for entrepreneurs. Um, on day one, you guys, we covered how to get vision, clarity, and purpose for your life. Um, hey, Shaletta. Uh, we talked about getting vision, clarity, and purpose for your life. On day two, we talked about bold ownership. What does it mean to take bold ownership over your life? Okay. On day three, um, on day three, we talked about, let's see, get my reminders here, okay, because my days are all running together, breaking the chains of limiting beliefs off of your life, all right? Breaking the chains of limiting beliefs off your life. Day four, which was yesterday, we talked about God giving us a business strategy and how does that fall into place with everything else that we talked about for the week. And then um, today is day five, y'all. We have done it, okay? Um, and day five is about divine connections and divine collaborations. Praying and asking God to put the right people in your life to partner with, to do life with, to grow with. Um, and we'll talk about why that's so important on today. Um, and so what I want y'all to do, this is the last day, tag some folks, tag three or four people, tell them to get on. I know it is super early. Um, we have been doing this at five o'clock central and six o'clock Eastern. And if you have been with us every day this week, please let us know in the chat. How many of you guys were here all five days with us? Um, if you were, I want to just say thank you and also just pray that you got so much out of it for yourself um, and for where you are in your life and just what you desire to create in your relationship with the Lord and in, in, in your in just in your entrepreneurial um, pursuits, but in your life's purpose and all of those things. And so, um, yes, that is my prayer for all of you guys. Um, but I just really pray that this blessed you guys on this week. That's right, Natasha, all five days. Um, and then Miss Healthy and Fit. And I think I know who that is. All five days. Sean, all five days. Awesome. Good job, you guys. All right, so we're going to jump right on into it. We're going to pray. Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you for um, these five days of prayer. I thank you for allowing me to be a vessel that you used um, to launch this. God, I pray that all that you're doing in and through all of us that are here, Father, that you allow us to just con continuously begin to hear from you, continuously begin to get guidance from you, continue uh, to get clarity from you so that we can move in the direction that you created for our lives. God, bless the ears 
of those that are listening on this morning. Use me as a vessel. Let me decrease as you increase and allow the ability for us to learn um, just how to hear from you when it comes to collaborations and connections, building relationships with people. Show us how to do that. Put the right people in our lives and allow us to be able to build a community, a tribe, a family of people that we're able to do life with and grow with. And it is in Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. All right, so this morning, you guys, we're gonna talk about divine connections and collaborations, okay? Divine connections. Um, and I, I think this is so critical, um, not just for entrepreneurs, but in all of our lives, because as they say, we are the result of our five closest friends, okay? And so who you have in your circle, um, it actually makes a big difference. If you have people in your circle that believe in you, that see the best for you, that desire to um, just speak life into you and want to see you become your best self and the relationship is mutual, uh, you will be able to do so much and accomplish so much. But if you're around people who don't really believe in you, but they're just around for whatever reason, it's convenient. We've known each other for a long time. You're, you, you know, there's, there's, you're beneficial to them or whatever. Um, it's dangerous, okay? It's dangerous. Um, and I speak about this from personal experience. You know, I've spent so many days these last couple of years, like feeling like I was disconnected from everything. And having a part, the right person to pick up the phone, to speak in your ear and just remind you of who you are is so powerful. It's also extremely powerful when you have people in your life that you can be vulnerable with, that you can be honest with, that you can confess and say, hey, I'm struggling in this area and I need your support. I really need you to help pray my, help pray with me on this situation. Um, you know, just really having people who will go to bat for you. And so that's what we're gonna talk about on today. Um, and, and so let's talk about having people in your life for divine opportunities and connections, okay? And the power of divine connections. So when you are connected to the right people, uh, what's gonna happen is they are gonna see the possibility and who you are called to be, okay? They're gonna be able to call out your destiny in you. Um, there's so many scriptures in, um, in the Bible that talks about mentorship and having the right people in their life. But one of the ones that I think about was Elijah and Elisha. Um, this is a story of um, pretty much someone that saw the possibilities in a young man. And the way that it worked is, I think uh, Elijah was like out in the field. If I mess up the name, y'all forgive me, you can go look it up. But he was out in the field plowing on his father's land. And Elijah had a dream about him. I might be butchering the story, but I'm gonna give y'all the short version. But he had a dream about him that he was called to mentor him pretty much. And, um, and so he went to the field to where this young kid was and I think he did something like put his cloak on him or drop something on him or whatever and walked away. Um, but essentially saying that there's a mantle on your life and you can choose to follow me so I can show you the way, right? And immediately he dropped everything that he was doing and he followed him. And he ended up being mentored by him. And he uh, went on to do, you know, to be one of the prophets, went on to be one of God's greats in the Bible. And the truth is, is that when you have the right people around you, they bring forth out your destiny. Um, they actually are able to, to hold you high and to see what's possible for you beyond what you can see for yourself. And one of the scriptures um, that I love and I always talk about, uh, let me see. I'm going to pull it up. I, I thought I had it up. Let's see. 
I think it's here. Um, but it's as iron sharpens iron, so does a man sharpen the countenance of his friend. Okay. As iron sharpens iron, so does a man sharpen the countenance of his friend. And when you are around people who um, sharpen your iron, what's happening is you're forever growing in your life. You're forever progressing in your life. And so what we have to do is we have to be super intentional about building those relationships. We have to be committed to becoming those people. I admit, I, I wasn't always there. Um, and, and here's why I feel like it is so important to be grounded in the word and understand the role that your relationship with God plays in business. See, when you're an entrepreneur and when you're wanting to be successful and you're wanting to build a business, you're very focused on the results. Okay. I want to say y'all, I'll talk for me. As an entrepreneur, when it comes to business, I'm often very focused on results. What's the goal? What are we wanting to accomplish? Where are we take, you know, where is what we're doing going to lead us? What's the plan? And so when you're very goal oriented and you're very mission driven, like, all right, what's the overall mission? What is it that we're wanting to accomplish? When you're very mission driven, what happens is, is that you work that way. You, your relationships become that way. You become very transactional in what do I need to do with this person to move the mission forward? It's not always focused on relational connections, okay? And so as a person who can have both a dominant personality and a super visionary personality, I'm often always thinking about the next thing and not often in the present moment. And so people with the personality trait like me can often come across as dismissive, like, you're not even caring that I'm here. It's like, oh no, I love it. I'm glad that you're here. But now that you're here, let's make this happen, right? So I've learned in business that you have to learn to be present and connected. And I'm still learning. Like that's something that I learned through this leadership um, uh, coach, uh, coaching program that I just went through was the power of being present and the power of engaging in a vision together and the power of bringing a community together to collaborate. And it takes time, right? Like, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I think one of the hardest things of working with human beings is their lack of giving others grace, right? It's like, most of us believe that people should just know something. And if they don't do what we want them to do, we walk away and we get upset because we got offended, not realizing they just weren't aware, you know? So when you are in positions of divine connections, what's happening is, is that, that you, you, these people begin to see your destiny. They understand where you're going. They understand what's possible for you. And they understand, you know, what it's going to take to get there. And what happens is, is they hold your hand in strategic partnership um, in strategic partnership to support you to get there. Okay. They hold your hand in, in strategic support and partnership. And so what does that mean? That means that when you are partnered with someone who sees where you're going, when you make mistakes, they don't write you off, right? They don't write you off. Instead, they hold you accountable and having someone that holds you accountable is somebody who is able to extend grace, but to also be willing to tell you what they see that are flaws that can be enhanced. They'll give you feedback and they'll say, you know what, Nicole, I know where you're going. I know you're excited about what you want to create, but what I see happening right now is that you're so laser focused on tomorrow that you're missing what's happening for today. And what I would like to encourage you to do is focus on what's in front of you. Focus on the relationships. Connect more with your people. Let them feel heard. You'll have people who will have the willingness to tell you where you're falling short. Most of us don't, we don't, we, we're in relationships with people that we don't trust because we don't believe that people will really have our back. We don't believe that people will really support us when we're down. And we've probably dealt with people who walked away from us in some of our lowest moments or just could not be what we hoped 
that they could be when we needed them in our lives the most. And what tends to happen is bitterness and anger, frustration, you know, and then it gets to a point where there's a grumbling or you might be talking about them to somebody else about how you felt. And then it creates a level of awkwardness in that relationship that when that person comes back around and you realize they meant well, it was just a mistake, you feel awkward because you talk so bad about them, right? And unfortunately, that's the common, uh, you know, the common scenario that we live in today's world, where when people don't get what they want out of you and they're unhappy with you, they actually talk about you to others. And then when they when you come around and they realize you're not so bad, that you were just disappointed and you were venting out of your personal disappointment and frustration, it makes you begin to pull away because you realize that you compromised a trust scenario in a relationship. And these are things that we get to work on. I will say that as a black woman who has grown up in a predominantly black community and all of those things, it's a problem culturally, right? It's a problem culturally to experience real sisterhood, to experience real support, to experience people holding you high, to experience where when things are falling apart, people are speaking for you on your behalf and not speaking against you. And so those are things that as we are beginning to discover these things, we get to develop, we get to grow, we get to um, practice and learn how to have uncomfortable conversations with the people that we love so that we can begin to nurture relationships that are very important to us. And so these are things that a lot of times um, we're not taught. These are things that you actually have to go invest and learn more about, or if you're exposed to them through others, it will begin to help you to see what's possible in the area of good quality connections and relationships and collaborations, okay? Um, uh, divine connections, the people, when you have divine connections, they see your destiny. When you have divine connections, they hold you accountable. And when you have divine connections, what happens is that now you're able to leverage other strengths in the areas that you are weak. You leverage other strengths in the areas that you are weak. And here's what that means. I don't know where we got this from, but we think we're supposed to know everything. We think we're supposed to figure everything out on our own. We think that if we hit a wall and we have a hard time, a lot of us go immediately into the emotion of shame. And we're very intimidated to ask for help. We're intimidated to go to somebody and say, I don't know how to do this. Y'all want to know one of the biggest areas that most of us are intimidated with? Money. We're scared to tell somebody, I honestly don't know how to balance my bank account. I honestly don't know how to budget. I don't know how to manage my spending. And so because we're afraid to admit that, what happens is that we hide in shame in this area of weakness and we suffer. Our financial situation suffers, our goals suffer, our household suffers. I remember when I called um, <coughs> my CPA, I was like, look, I can make money, but I'm not the best at managing it. Help, I'm trying to figure it out, but I want to hire somebody who know what they're doing, right? Because, because of my personality, I have so much going on in my life that sometimes there are specific areas that I can't, I don't really, when I sit down and try to figure out, okay, how does this need to look? I can't quite figure out what the end result or how the process should actually be. I can guess, I can read about it, but guess what? There's, there's people who are really good at that. So why do I need to suffer in silence? And why do I need to, um, you know, go through this process of making it really hard for me uh, to navigate this instead of asking for help? And so when you surround yourself with divine connections in the right relationships, you can leverage the strengths of other people. And that allows you to be, to be um, very comfortable with asking for help and knowing who to go to when things are falling apart. So 
I, per, I recently um, dealt with feeling like I didn't have support, right? I had this whole narrative in my head, like, man, when I need help, I don't have anybody. And um, and I'm going through this coaching program, y'all. I just went through I, I just went through a six month intensive emotional intelligence uh, leadership program. And one of the questions that they kept asking me is, Nicole, uh, you know, where does it stem from, and 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 where else is it showing up in your life? And why is it showing up in your life? Like, what do you mean you don't have any support? What does that mean? And I was like, I just feel like I got to do everything on my own. Well, here's the reality. I didn't have to do everything on my own. I was so used to doing everything on my own. I just didn't know how to ask for help. Just a flip of perspective. It was like, they were like, you're a lone wolf, you know? And, and it showed up where we went out to dinner. Or we went out to lunch together, right? And I'm driving and every, my car is like a seven seater. And so everybody's in the car. And I'm trying to make a left turn and something was sitting in the console of, um, you know, of the, um, of the car, like sitting right up underneath my arm, of, of, of my, the, the, a bag. So when I go to turn, the bag falls in my lap and it like was a distraction while I'm trying to use the steering wheel and, you know, drive and, and at the same time. So what did I do? I just took the bag and carefully held it in my lap while I was driving. And the passenger was the 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 lady who owns the um, the coaching center that we we're a part of. And she was like, Nicole, why are you not asking for support? You got a car full of people. She was like, you don't get to get into a car accident because you had seven people in the car and you chose to carry the burden of holding some a bag in your hand while you were driving. Like that doesn't make any sense. But some of us have spent so many years feeling like, well, they're not going to help me. So I'm just going to do this by myself, wherever it comes from, whether it's to prove people wrong, whether it is because you were forced to be independent for so long in your life that you didn't know how to ask for help, whether you you were just not in the right circles. It stems from somewhere. But the truth is, is it's not the truth. <laughs> It may be your perspective. It may be your experience, but it's not the truth. There are people who will come in your life and they want to support you and they want to help you and they want to be there for you. If only you would ask, if only you would ask and you will find that as you are there for others, they will be there for you. Are you the person that are like, I ain't helping them. I'm not doing, I ain't got time for that to do this with them people. I'm not, no, we're not doing it. We're not helping them. Are you that person? Because he who has friends must him must himself be friendly, right? So in order for you to attract those people in your life, you got to become that person in your life, right? And so these are things that we get to work on so that we can have and attract divine collaborations because it does take for you to also reciprocate reciprocate that possibility to others in order for it to be very active in your life, all right? So number three is you can leverage others' strengths, okay? The next thing is number four, when you're connected to um, divine connections, they will support your setbacks. All right. They will support your setbacks. So when you are walking with someone who is divine, that God has inspired in your life. OK. And and I've had a handful of people in my life that were so divine, just God inspired. OK. And it's so funny. I'm just I'm a, I'm a reference one probably throughout this entire because whenever I think about what a mentor is in your life, what a friend is in your life, what a real divine connection is. I'm reminded of a man that I met in college that became my mentor that completely changed my life. And just to give you a little short story. So when I went to college, I started off at Tuskegee. And um, I remember, you know, my grandmother was heavy into church, but we were seven day Adventists, Caribbean people, most Caribbean people. Um, you'll find like Haitian communities, a lot of Caribbean folks or whatever are seven day Adventists. And my grandmother was seven day Adventist. So we had to do church on Saturday. <coughs> you had to um, keep the Sabbath holy. You couldn't do nothing on Friday nights. But my grandmother was a very, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't paint your nails. You can't wear pants. You can't put holes in your ears. You can't, um, 
you can't uh, eat meat. You can't, you can't, you can't. Okay, so when you grow up in here, you can't. What do you do? You run. My mom ran from it. And my mom was like, you don't have to do all that. Like, we're not doing that. Like, she didn't want to be under that strict covering. So growing up, I just thought that church was a bunch of rules. So when I got to church at Tuskegee, you had all these different forms of thought, right? That the Bible's not real. It was a form of controlling for slavery. Like, you know, you get to an HBCU, you're going to hear a whole lot of stuff about churches and historically a lot of challenges and struggles that are in our culture about Jesus and all that stuff, right? So I had all these different perspectives about God and I didn't know what to believe. So I remember I went to Auburn and I transferred to Auburn University and I was like, I need church. I had joined something called Sisterhood in Tuskegee. And that's kind of where I really started like seeking to learn, like, what is it like to, what is this thing like with a relationship with God? What is that? I didn't even know what it meant. I didn't understand any of the lingo, any of the church lingo. I was like, what is a church? What is a relationship with God? Like, how do you have a relationship with God? Like, it was just weird to me because I was logical about everything, right? Super analyzing everything. So I get to Auburn and I go through the yellow pages and I'm looking for a church. And I'm not going to lie, y'all, I was looking for a black church. <laughs> so I remember going through the yellow pages and calling each church, trying to see if I heard a black voice. And if I didn't, I hung up. Um, long story short, I found one. And so I ended up going to a church. And uh, my first Sunday that I got there, I, I had on like some super tight pants, heels on, just looking like I had no idea what it's like to be in the church. But I was hungry. I was like, somebody gonna tell me about what this thing is about God. Like, I need to understand what a relate, like what is what is this thing with God? Like, I wanna know. So I get to the church and um, it wasn't a normal preacher, right? It was, they were like, we have a guest speaker today. Um, he's one of our, um, our pastors from the, or, or one of the speakers, he's like a student speaker or whatever. And a guy speaks and I was like, oh, I can understand what he's saying. Cause you know, you go to church, you'd be like, I don't know what y'all talking about. I have no idea what I was supposed to get out of this. I feel like I got saved every time I walked into a church cause I didn't understand what salvation meant. I didn't understand any of that stuff. It just was always so high and lofty. I used to call it Shakespearean. I was like, who understands this Shakespearean language? I just didn't. So he was talking and I was like, I gotta talk to him. So I walked up to him after church. I was like, can I get with you? Cause I wanna learn more about God. And I was super bold, you know, a little South Central LA girl in, in, in Alabama. And um, he was like, come meet me at Bible study on Wednesday, right? So I was like, cool. So I went on that Wednesday and it was like three people there, super small. Um, and I just started asking a ton of questions. I was like, all right, how does this thing with God works? Why do y'all raise y'all hands? Like, what do you, how do you know what to pray? How, I was just like drilling him and drilling him and drilling him and asking him all these questions. And he, I remember looking at him laughing. He was just, he was just laughing at everything that would come out of my mouth. You know, why can't we have sex? Why can't I smoke weed? Why can't I drink? Why can't I curse? Why, you know, I was just asking him, like, why are there all these rules, right? And from that day forward, y'all, this man took me under his wing and he just started showing me how to read the Bible. He was like, all right, this is, you know, he just introduced me to everything. So we ended up probably, I think he ended up being there for two more years before he graduated and moved on. But I remember I would go to him. His name was Patrick Smith. And I would go to him and I'd be like, Pat, I need your opinion. And he would look at me and he'd be like, Nick. I'm not going to give you my opinion. I'm going to tell you what the word says. And he will show me a scripture about everything that I asked. And I was like, why do you always got to give me scripture? I don't want no scripture. I want your opinion. And he was like, because my opinion don't count. It's what God says that he wants to do in your life. I can't tell you what to do in your life. And I love and appreciate so many lessons that he taught me to this day. And I remember when I didn't understand why I couldn't listen to, you know, because, you know, they talked a lot about the music you listen to. And I was like, why y'all don't like rap music? Because back then, that was when Columbia House was in and you could get all them CDs for one cent, right? So I had my Ice Cube, my Tupac, my Snoop Dogg, my Biggie Smalls, all my stuff. And I would be banging it every day, right? And he was like, well... He was like, I just want to encourage you that if you are in a season where you want to receive from God and you really want to learn how to hear from God, you have to put things in front of you where they're going to feed into that desire to learn about God. And I was like, okay, so what does that mean? I was like, 
These people love God too. They always thank God when they go on the stage, right? <laughs> this is how naive. And they be like, I want to thank God. And they be like, you, I was like, they Christians too. Like I can learn from them too, right? So he explains to me, he said, Nick, he said, I want you to think about it like this. He said, if you had a black dog and a white dog and they got into a fight, who would win? And I was like, I don't know, the white dog? And he was like, no. He said, if you fed the black dog a steak and the white dog was malnourished, the black dog is going to win. He said, the one that's going to win is the one that has been fed the most. The one that's in the, the, the greatest condition to be able to fight. He said, what happens is when you're constantly feeding yourself all this music, that is not feeding your spirit, but is feeding other things in you, like anger, like sex, lust, all these things. He said, what happens is whenever you get in any situation, whatever you've been feeding yourself is going to win. He said, if you want to learn how to live your life for the Lord, learn how to have a relationship with God, learn how to hear from God. He was like, you got to listen to things that will nurture that so that that can win in your life. And I was like, wow. And I got rid of all my CDs after that. I threw all that stuff away and started listening to gospel music and was like, I want to learn how to read the Bible. I want to learn how to hear from God. I want to learn how to pray. I want to learn. I wanted to learn. I wanted a better life. And so, um, and I just remember how quickly I grew once I did that. All of a sudden, I understood the word. It was like the interpretation was so different. It's almost like somebody comes with a, 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 a eraser and you are you have all this stuff all over your whiteboard, just squiggles everywhere, and they just clink wipe your brain clean, and now you can receive. All the clutter was gone. And one thing that I can say about Pat, it was never a dumb question. No matter how many times I failed, no matter how many times I slipped up, I remember going to him, ashamed of things that I did in college, relationships that I got into that I knew I shouldn't have, mistakes that I made, and I would be boohoo crying in shame. And Pat would be like, Nick, all things will work together for your good. This is how you learn how to implement God's word in your life. He never, ever, ever judged me. Ever, ever. He just saw what was possible for me and he spoke to that. And so when you get real divine connections in your life where people are assigned to you by God, you can't take those relationships for granted. Everybody's not in your life to be your buddy, buddy, your gossip partner. Some people are just going to be planted in your life to show you what God has called you to do. And they're going to hold you to that. And that's that. You have to understand, like with Pat, he was not to this day. I probably talked to Pat two or three times, maybe four times since he left college. We didn't keep in contact long after he left. The funny thing is I met my husband through Pat. Pat came to me when he went to a summer camp. And he met his wife. He came back and told me he had met his wife at this summer camp that he went to. He said, Nick, I think you need to go to the camp. When Pat told me that I should go to this camp, I had already signed up to go to the Czech Republic. I was a business student and we were going to the Czech Republic for a business kind of like a, a international travel, whatever it was, international student program or whatever. So I was going to Europe and um, he was like, I just feel like you need to be at this camp. And I was like, oh. I got to cancel my Czech Republic trip. So I was like, okay, if you say I need to go, I'm going to go, right? Because when you got people in your life who see stuff for you, you listen. So I didn't second guess. I was like, all right, Pat, bet, I'm going. I went to that camp and first day, first person I met was my husband. I didn't, I didn't go there looking for a husband. When we left the camp, we didn't think we would be husband and wife. We just became good friends. But a couple of years later, we would reconnect and it, he became my husband. But I'm always blown away because guess what? The summer before when Pat went to camp and he did his time at camp, guess who his roommate was? It was my husband. He didn't even know me and him connected and got married until after we got married. And we started, me and my husband started talking and realized we were both at Pat's wedding and that Pat was his roommate and that Pat was the reason why I was at camp. We were already married when we actually started talking about how I got to camp. And so... That's the power of mentors in your life is, is that they support you in your setbacks. They escort you in your journey. They are constantly speaking life when you, when you cannot see 
what's possible for you. And so it is so important. It is so important, y'all, to truly pray and ask God to bring those kind of people in your life because they are critical to your destiny. They are so critical to your destiny. It's like when I think about all the people in the Bible, all of them had a predecessor, someone who came and invested in them as they were about to move on and they invested all that they had into them. And that is what we're called to do. We're called to actually pour back into others, right? And help hold them high. But we're not taught that in the real world that we live in today. Relationships, friendships, connections are not sacred in the world that we live in today. They're very dime a dozen. They're very, um, they're very just, people just don't value them. And, and I think one of the main reasons why is because social media. I think that social media has made us very um, desensitized to what it's like to connect with people in real life. And I got to admit, it was me. I had become such a hermit in my house because I can work from home, make money from home. I have to leave my house. I literally can be in this house for a, probably a whole month and never leave. Honestly, I can order Instacart. I can order whatever to my door. I, I, all my bills get paid. Money keeps coming in. You know, all I can do everything from home. And when you have that level of convenience, you don't really want to put a lot of effort into anything outside of that. So putting effort into friendships and relationships for me became more of a um, a distraction. Like, oh, this going to take my time. I got this project I got to work on. Like I became very antisocial. And I'm still learning how to be social again. It, it was honestly this program that I went through and being in a tribe of 40 plus people that you really got to bond with and you see the power of connection and friendships and holding each other high. It changed my life because I was like, oh my God, this is what your life is really supposed to look like. It's not you lone wolfing and you trying to figure life out on your own and you dealing with all your stuff on your own. It's not you dealing with people turning their back on you, talking bad about you, you know, not trusting anybody that the minute you go in a room, you, you talk and then when you leave, everybody's talking about you, you know. When you, when you get to see what real community and what real tribe is like um, and that you can be in environments where you are vulnerable and people accept you for who you are, but they also hold you high for who you could be and they don't judge you for your setbacks, y'all, it is a whole nother level of impacting your life. But once again, these are things that we have to personally personally learn how to become. And it's something I'm working really hard on. Like I'm trying to, I don't want to say trying, I'm working and I am intentional about building divine relationships. But I will tell you guys something, God gives us discernment and everybody ain't designed to be those divine connections. There are going to be people in your life that are in your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And some people's reason is probably just transactional. Some people's reason might be because there is some connection of some sort in your life, um, but it may not be that intimate connection where that person is, is, is deserving of getting access to you. And so when it comes to that, we have to be very discerning and discernment comes from the Holy Spirit where God will be like, uh-uh-uh, you don't tell them that. The Holy Spirit will tell you who to tell and who not to tell. And it's so funny because... I, it's a lot that goes on in my life, and I probably call one or two people and tell them. But there are people who I can sit on the phone with them for an hour and listen to them talk, and they can talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, and I will never tell them what's going on with me because they're not the assignment in my life to mentor me in that area of my life. So I don't go, it's like married people. I cannot go to single people to get marriage advice. So I'm not going to constantly get on the phone with a single person and ask them what they think I should do about my marriage. I might vent sometimes when I'm frustrated, but your real counsel needs to come from someone with wisdom, someone who is divinely um, connected to you and someone who holds you high and they want the best for you. That's who we need to get counsel from in certain situations. They, if you have really, really good people in your life, like I am, um, I went, me and my husband went through some stuff recently and I was like, I don't know. Like, you know, when you married after a while, you'd be like, maybe I should just go explore, right? It, 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 it gets to that sometimes. And earlier um, this year, I was there. I was like, I'm a little frustrated. 
I feel like we both set in our ways. We want something different. And I had to find somebody to call. And I was like, I need somebody to give me wise counsel to work through this. And I found somebody and they were like, I'm going to hop on a plane to come see y'all. And he was like, by the end of the year, you won't even realize your, your marriage. And let me tell you something. That person invested so much in us that I look at my husband. He's a brand new man. I was like, who is this man? And it came from somebody who wanted the best for us. Right. And so when it comes down to divine connections, they they see your destiny. They hold you accountable um, that you can leverage their strengths and they support your setbacks. Um, another thing is they give you honest feedback. OK, they give you honest feedback. So this is something that I just learned in my emotional intelligence class. OK, feedback and feedback is when you go to people and you ask them, you know, like, what do they see in your in, in your situation? So or it might be something that you see coming up in somebody's life over and over again. So let's say you have a friend and they call you and they call you complaining all the time about a certain situation. It might be that they're complaining about their kids or that they're complaining about their marriage or that they're complaining about their job or they're complaining about all the things. But what you see in that person is that there are some accountability issues on in their life. There are things that they're not actually holding themselves up to for the standard for what they're thinking they're expecting to have in return in those areas. And you might want to be a good listener, but being a really good divine connected friend, you might want to give them feedback and be like, you know what, Nick, I got to be honest. I hear you complaining about your husband. I hear you complaining about your kids. I hear you complaining about all these things. But I also see that you're constantly taking on and saying yes to everything. And, and that that was what came up with me and my husband. My coach had told me, she was like, you don't even trust your husband. She was like, you feel like you have to save everybody. You feel like if you don't do things, then it won't get done right. She was like, so you enable everybody around you. You do not empower the, the people around you. Therefore, you are frustrated because you're carrying the burden of all the responsibility because you refuse to, to empower others to be able to do what they can do. She was like, this is all self-inflicted. So all the complaining and the grumbling that you're talking about, that you, you, you frustrated that they're not doing this. And that, are you holding them accountable? Are you making room for them to step into that role? Are you handing things off and letting them learn how to be able to handle that area? Are you willing to do that? Because all this complaining you're doing is from self-inflicted choices. When you get someone to give you that level of feedback, it can change your life. And what is so crazy, y'all, is that we're around people all the time that we see their patterns and we see what's going on in their life and we refuse to tell them what's happening. We refuse to be honest with them and be like, listen, I'm with you or I talk to you almost every day and I hear you complain about the same things. But I'm going to tell you what I see that is the cause, the root cause of why this is an issue for you. It's you, right? Right. Your lack of discipline, your lack of commitment, your lack of follow through, your lack of trust, your lack of whatever. Because, y'all, we're around each other all the time. I, people who are around me know that I'm a visionary and I got a lot going on. And so organization is not my number one thing. I, I, I work re really hard at it. But I realized that as visionaries, we're always forward thinkers. So we're moving on to the next, to the next, to the next. So there's a book called Rocket Fuel. It is a business book. And what it teaches is in everything that you do in business, you need two people leading the charge in a business. You need a visionary and you need an integrator. And they talk about what a visionary actually is three people. Um, um, but they talk about what a visionary is and an integrator. And then you need it like a project manager. Right. But a visionary is a person that sees where we're going. The integrator is a person that maps out the details and they execute on getting it done. And then you're going to have that project manager that is going to make sure that all the moving parts are all where they need to be and they need to make it happen. And so, you know, I can be around people and they might look at me and be like, you all over the place. Well, that, you know, it's as a visionary, that's how we can come across. We got a lot going on, a lot of projects, a lot of this, a lot of that. And, but... When you get into a business setting or even in any setting and you start understanding that there are roles and responsibilities and strengths that I need of people who I need to put around me, 
What happens is, is now when you start balancing yourself out with these other people, you can tell them, hey guys, help hold me accountable in this area so I can make sure that this happens. Help hold me accountable in this area. And so that person who doesn't have your personality and doesn't operate and think like you, when they start seeing you drift, they'll be like, Nicole, come back. That's how my project manager is. Like we can be on our team calls and I'm like, oh my God, y'all, I thought about this. And then in my day, she's been with me for like five or six years. And she's like that even killed project. Man. She's like the um, integrator. She's like, Nicole, so let's get back to what you said. We're going to get done. What are the next steps that we need to be focused? Like she'll bring me right back. And Jaleesa, who's uh, my graphic, my lead graphic designer, we always laugh because because Jaleesa's kind of like me. So we start getting excited about something. And then my team be like, okay, so let's get back to today. The focus is this, 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 like she sl snaps us right back in place. So having people around you, understanding like, you know, what, where your weaknesses are and who you need to have in place in your, and within reach of you so that these things can start making sense. And they, because you don't want to feel bad about how you're wired. You, you do get to work on those weaknesses. You do get to enhance them and improve them. But you don't want to live your life in shame. You want to live your life in surrender and say, okay, God, this is an area that I need support in. I need help in my life. Please allow me to be connected to the right people. And so we have to learn how to pray for God to bring the right people in our life. We have to learn how to acknowledge where things are falling apart and they don't, they're not coming together and you need help. Um, my daughter was struggling with math the other night and I looked at them problems and I was like, I can't do this. So I put a post up on Facebook, got tons and tons of resources. But then I realized my niece is fresh out of, out of high school. She's 20 years old, 21 years old. And I called her and she was like, oh my God, I love algebra. We got on that Zoom and she made my daughter feel like a champion because they cranked through that homework in an hour together. And, and she was with her favorite cousin and it was awesome. But I had to start thinking, where do I need to ask for support? Where do I need to ask for help? When I get stuck... You being stuck is because you get you as far as you can go. When you're getting stuck, it means that you need someone to help you shift or you get you you get to reach out and figure out who can help me make a shift from this current situation. And so that is the five things that I wanted to talk about, the power of divine connections and divine collaborations. They see your destiny. They hold you accountable. They let you can leverage their strengths. You can, um, they support your setbacks and they give you honest feedback. Um, and it's so many other key pointers in this, but of course we're going to wrap up so that we don't go, um, super duper long this morning, but I am going to, um, at, before we get ready to close out in prayer, just to give you guys a few announcements, um, the book is available for pre-sale and by Sunday, for those of you that, um, and I, for those of you that don't know, I wrote a book called Praying Bold Prayers. And so uh, all the prayers that we pray um, on these calls that we've done this week comes from a book that I wrote uh, like two years ago, maybe. Um, and I got told me to publish it and I just was hard headed and didn't complete the task, which visionaries do sometimes. You got stuff complete and done, but not complete. Right. Um, and so you guys will get the five prayers that we pray this week. They, they will be to you by Sunday. Okay. You'll get the um ebook the ebook version. And then um by before the end of the year, you'll get the full book. All right. Um, in the ebook version. And the, the published one will come January 22nd. Another announcement to make is that I will have a mastermind group um for believers in business and for people who really want to be strategic with a purpose as purpose-driven entrepreneurs. If you are in business, want to be in business, and you are um, at a point in your life where you're just like, I don't want to do it the way I see everybody else doing it. Like, I feel like there's so much more in the process, you know, that can be fully aligned with the holistic version of me. Then you want to get on my um, email list. You can go to reinventmyself.co, uh, reinventmyself.co, and it's just a little waiting list page. I'll be making an announcement um, of when we're opening up the doors to that. And we're going to have like a early, like a, a founding members rate where you guys will get a much better deal coming in early. Uh, cause it's really a, a 2022 program, but we'll have like a, a early, um, beta group, uh, coming into it this year. So reinventmyself.co, if somebody can just put that in the chat and then praying bold prayers, if you have not registered on that site, um, 
If you have not registered on the site for prayingboldprayers.com, um, thank you. If you have not registered on the site uh, for prayingboldprayers.com, get on the text list because you'll get the updates and the newsletter of all the things going on. Um, guys, business is my ministry. Like business is, I, I'm, I love business, right? So even this morning I woke up and I was like, I'm gonna do a business operations um, uh, part of our, for our training center where you learn about how to do sales funnels. Like sales systems is a really big deal. A lot of people don't understand sales funnels, all these things. And so our, com our company, we have a training company that's building out tech hubs so that people can overcome their struggles in technology so that people can start building sales systems and sales funnels with ease or at least have access to the resources of what you need to do. Um, it's just so many things that our team is creating in our membership community that is going to be able to help people get what they need to get your business moving. It is exciting to have a vision, but it's more important to have a plan to execute on the vision and get the vision executed. And so we're creating a community where it's purpose-driven um, business, purpose-driven entrepreneurship, focusing on integrity, focusing on transformation, focusing on impact. And we're going to be, um, and it's not going to be just me. We have someone, Shaletta's on here, y'all. She does business credit. Um, and so for those of you who are struggling with funding and getting your business going, Shaletta Fisher, um, I think she's on Instagram right now. She does a business credit class right now, but she is our, um, on our panel for business credit. She knows how to get business funding and business grants so that you can have money to support your business. These are divine connections you want in your life. She's a powerful God fearing woman. Um, and so we're building out her sales systems now. Um, and then we have other people in our community, like Pastor Gines, who's a peak performance. He teaches people how to reach their goals, how to overcome procrastination, how to operate from a place of peak performance. And so we have a beautiful team of people that are coming together with their skills and their um, abilities that will be a part of this community that you will get a chance to experience. So make sure you guys go to reinventmyself.co and I'm going to be sending you the information for um, the pre-registration uh, to be a part of the founding members of this community, okay? Um, all right, so those are the announcements that I need to make. We're gonna go ahead and pray. And this prayer, you guys, that I wrote, it's just so funny how God orchestrated all of this. I didn't know what he was doing on Sunday when he told me to do these five days of prayer. I forgot all about the book. I didn't think about the book when I did this. I didn't think about the book till Monday morning when we had to pray, and I was like, girl, you got a whole book of prayers. Pull them up. And I pulled them up and y'all started asking to buy the book. That's that's why y'all got to know when God's telling you to do something, be obedient. It may not make sense. You don't know where it's going. He don't give you all the steps. He just say, go do this. And you do it. And now like the floodgates have ripped open this week since I took action on this. Um, so this prayer that I wrote is a prayer for the right relationships friendships and divine connections. Okay. So I'm going to read this and this will be in your guide. You guys can get the book. Um, it's in my bio on Instagram and on Facebook. Uh, if y'all want to go by the praying bold prayers book for entrepreneurs. Um, so this prayer is, this is a prayer for the right relationships, friendships, and divine connections. It says there's a say, um, Oh no, that's not the prayer. That's the first lead into it. Here's the prayer. Heavenly Father, I come before you today on behalf of my desire to be connected to the right people. Lord, I want friends. I want to trust people and I want to experience your divine love in the form of relationships. But Lord, I need help. Help me to overcome my past. Help me to overcome those experiences that may have hurt me and caused me to build walls that shut people out. Help me to trust again. Help me to open up and be willing to connect with people in a deeper way. Teach me how to have discernment. Show me how to navigate in the space of connections with people so that I'm in alignment with your will and your way. Lord, I pray Holy Spirit divinely guides me in every way through every connection, showing me how to discern who's a good fit versus those that I need to stay away from. Lord, help me to overcome my skepticism and instead fill my life with trust. Show me how to walk by faith and not by sight, knowing that you will keep me, guide me, and show me the way. 
Lord, your word says that as iron sharpens iron, so does a man sharpen the countenance of a friend. Lord, I need friends. I want friends. I want to learn how to be a good friend. Show me the way, Lord. Father, teach me to forgive. Help me to not hold everyone else hostage for the pains, mistakes, and disappointments of my past. Lord, show me how to trust in you and know that no matter what I may have experienced, all things are working together for my good according to your will and purpose. Lord, let me not live in bondage from other people's fears, assumptions, judgments, or criticisms, but let me live my life fully trusting in you. I declare that you will place people in my life that will come to me divinely appointed from you. People that will help build me up, speak life, and add value to my life and be an amazing support as well as someone to have fun with. Let me give them the freedom to be human, knowing that they will have flaws, can also have different opinions, and can make mistakes. But I pray that we be aligned divinely with purpose. God, you have so much that you desire to do in and through me. Send me the right people to help me in the areas where I am weak. Send me the right people to support me in the areas where I need to grow. Surround me with people that will help elevate me to walk even greater with you in my divine purpose. Send me guidance, support, and insight through mentors that can stretch me in my thinking. Lord, I want to be fully set free in the areas of relationships. Your word says that he who has friends must himself be friendly. Show me how to live at a higher standard of love, being a listening ear, a great support, a committed friend without judgment who speaks life into all those that I encounter. Let me, I'm so honored to be connected to you. Let me be a vessel for you. Let me be the hands and feet of you. Let others feel your love when they encounter me. I dedicate that I shall radiate the power. I, um, I declare that I shall radiate the power, joy, love, and embrace of you, O oh Lord, with everyone that I encounter. Let my smiles bring someone joy. Let my words bring hope to others. Let my love help melt the fears away of others. Let the work of my hands be the thing that continues to make someone's day. Let my everyday affairs be done to bless others. And let my life radiate in love where everything about me impacts, inspires, and empowers someone else. Lord, I'm honored to be set free to experience the greatest joy of any and all friendships and relationships that walk into my life. And I thank you for new beginnings. From this day forward, I am an amazing friend. I will have amazing friends in my life and I continue to attract powerful relationships. I declare all of this in Jesus' precious holy name. We pray, amen. And I'm just gonna speak a couple of affirmations. I have a bunch of them on here, but these are affirmations and declarations to support um, to support this prayer. It says, I radiate the power, joy, love, and embrace of you, O Lord, with every everyone that I encounter. I am the walking source of joy, love, happiness, and speaking life. Everyone I encounter will be changed, transformed, inspired, or empowered because of our encounter. I am love. I have a community of friends who love me, speak life into me, support me, provide listening ears. We laugh together, we cry together, and we live with divine purpose in our friendships. Everywhere I go, I attract men and women of power, influence, and transformation. People are drawn to me through the Holy Spirit, and I divinely attract all the right people in my life who are assigned to my growth and development for the season that I'm in. I am a good listener. When someone is in need of having someone to talk to without judgment or criticism, I am that person. I respect people's differences. I no longer hold people hostage to my same thoughts, opinions, and way of life. Instead, I'm open to allowing people to be who God created them to be, and I am a supportive source to love them through their destiny. I am powerful. I no longer have to shrink back and be intimidated by others. I am powerful beyond measure. Who I am and how how I am, how in my personal growth over the years is worth worthy of love and others receive me just as I am. I will no longer live in the world of loneliness. I operate according to God's divine timing. And in those seasons where I'm feeling alone, I will seek God in prayer and trust that I am being aligned with those that are called to support me in that season. I forgive others. I forgive others for being human, for their mistakes, and for the disappointments that I may have faced due to others. I am an extension of God's grace. I love people through their being and know that God is using me no matter what. Whew, was that a lot, y'all? Y'all feeling that prayer? That is the prayer for divine connections, the right relationships, um, the in uh, friendships. And so here's some practical steps that you can implement moving forward. Um, these I put uh, these are all in the book. So when you get the book, you'll you'll have all of these um uh, in the book as well, but it's like practical steps, your next steps for you to take. It says write down your friend's wish list. 
What is on your friend's wish list? And that means when you think about the kind of people you want in your life, who are they? What kind of people are they? What are you experiencing? What are the traits that they have? Um, next up, write down where you add up in being the friend you desire and identify what you need to do differently to become the friend you want to attract. So now that you wrote your wish list of what you want your friends to be, you got to ask yourself, how much on this wish list am I? And where do I get to grow to become what I want somebody else to be? See, we do that in, in our love. I want the love of my life and he has to be rich and he has to have good credit and he has to have this and that and the other. And then it'd be like, well, do you got all them things that's on your wish list for the love of your life? Right? So anyway, write down three to five things you can do to put yourself in environments to attract those friends. Go on a social media fast. Commit to picking up the phone two to three times per week to check in on your friends. Write a handwritten note to tell someone how much you appreciate them. Go out and leave your phone in the car so you can be intentional about connecting and schedule a get together with friends and make it a phone free zone. That is in the Praying Bold Prayers book, y'all, coming soon. If you are uh, ordered it, you will get your copy of these prayers by Sunday. So I hope this bless you guys. We are going to wrap up. I always end on this note. If you're in a place where you really want to create a divine relationship with God, where you can receive from him, you can just simply say, Lord, come into my life. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I ask that you, I, I believe God, but help me in my unbelief. Help me to understand the things that my brain, I just don't, I don't understand this God thing. I'm trying to figure it out. That's where I was. Um, but help me to learn what it's like to hear from you. Help me to learn what it's like to pray and actually know that my prayers are being encountered. Help me to know what it's like to, to, to believe that all that I hear you say you're going to do is actually possible, right? So you can pray and talk to God like you, like, Listen, God know everything about us. I don't know why we be thinking we got to perform for God. You got to perform. People people want you to perform for them. But God is not like that. God be so excited. He love his prodigal children to come back to him. I don't care how wild, wild, wild of a black sheep you are. He's always excited to see you invite him into his life and give him permission to be a part of your journey. So I love you guys. I am so excited. Make sure y'all get on my list. This is our last day. I have not been led to do this every single morning forever. It's a whole lot, y'all. It's a big sacrifice to do this every morning at 5 a.m. Because I did not sleep last night. I've been up since 1 o'clock in the morning, FYI. Um, so I, I have not been led to do this every morning. But as I am doing things, I'm going to let you guys know. Plus, I was, I am planning a 2022 um business strategy planning weekend, like how to manifest your vision for your business. I'm looking at the, uh, I think it's the second weekend in January or the third weekend in January here in Austin. Um, I am definitely doing it. Uh, so if, if you guys are interested in wanting to be a part of that, let me know. It could be as big or as small of a group as, as it needs to be, but It'll be about, it'll be three days and it'll be, um, the first day will be about alignment. The second day will be about strategy. Um, and then the, the third day will be about leverage. Um, and so we'll, you know, y'all get all this information, but you got to get on my list and I will let y'all know when we're going to do more calls, if we do them or when we'll do one, maybe a week, maybe. Okay. So share these videos, y'all get it out there to other people. Let folks know that this is here. And I'm excited about our community, reinvent myself. And um, yeah, so can't wait. <laughs> come on, Troy. I would love for you and Abby to come. That would be so awesome. I already found the location. I was on it at one o'clock this morning. I, it's a house that I keep seeing that I was like, oh, we can do our, our mastermind, like a, our strategy um, event here. And so I woke up this morning and I couldn't sleep and I just mapped it all out. And I was like, yep, yeah, we're going to do it either January 7th through the 9th or the following weekend. Okay. All right, you guys. Y'all have a great and awesome. Yeah, you can get a copy Edda, of the prayer. Go into the link in my book in my um, on my page. And um, uh, can you have virtual tickets? That's a good idea. I can. I'll figure out how to do it. Okay. Um, go, go to my links in my bio, y'all, my bio on my Facebook page and my bio on my Instagram page has the link to the book, Praying Bold Prayers. All right. You can go and buy the book there. 
and you will get the five days of prayer to you by this Sunday and the full book to you before the end of the year. All right, virtual. It'll be an ebook. And then the actual print book is the beginning of next year. January 22nd is the goal, but supply chain is weird right now. So we don't know what's going to happen economically on the timelines of things getting done. Okay. Love you guys. This is it for our five days of prayer. And I'm going to send the replay out. I have a page with all the replays on it. I'm going to upload this one when it's done. And you guys can go ahead and access all the replays of the play of the um, this week on there. Okay. Said a lot. Love you guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.